All right, there are plenty of videos on how to put a rooftop tent on top of a truck. Today, I'm gonna to show you the, specifically, um, I have an iCamper Mini 3.0, and I'm going to use a, a ramp system. Now, I highly suggest if you have a garage that's tall enough to fit your vehicle with your rooftop tent on it in there, is to use a lift system, be a, be a, a lot easier. There are plenty of good lift systems out there, um, some specifically designed for that. All right, so let me show you the ramp first. All right, so this is the iCamper Mini already on the ramp. I've made it out of two by fours, and I'll show you some more details later when we get it up on the truck. But I'm using this two by four on top to act as a stopper when this thing slides to the back it'll stop right here i probably should put another board up here taller just as a safety measure and i've kind of reinforced this um, because this is the lifting board and since this was only uh, bolted in here with lag bolts i decided to kind of strap it down a little tighter just in case and of course i have an eye bolt here which is where my winch is going to hook not the winch on the truck but the winch that i have which you'll see here in a minute i put some wheels on here so i can easily roll it and you'll see where those come into play <clears throat> the other difference that you might see from this ramp is i put some two by fours underneath here to act to give it more support the two by fours by themselves would probably worked and i did use it like that at first but it kind of wobbled up and down with the weight of this. This is only 123 pounds, but that's quite a bit of weight. So I didn't really care for that. So I put these to give it some more support and I just lag bolted these into this. Um, but the key component that I think are these sheets of plastic that I put on here. And I just bought a 24 by 24 half inch sheet of plastic off of um, Amazon and countersunk some bolts in here and screwed it in it just makes this surface as compared to the wood a lot slicker and this thing just glides across here no problem much easier getting it off than on but uh, you'll see all that in a minute and of course i put wheels on all of this so i could easily roll it around now my situation um, is a little bit different in that i don't use this garage I live in a duplex and this garage is on the other side of the duplex and I have a carport on the other side, which is where I put my vehicle. So I leave the tent, you know, right in here on that um, cart, if you will, or ramp on the floor here and it just stays in here the whole time. And I just move it from out here and I park my truck right here and we're gonna mount it right up on here and lift it. So let me show you how all this gets done. All right, so first things first, um, I have these two eye bolts that I put um, in these rafters that come off the, the top of my garage. You could put yours in here if you don't have these. This is an old garage, but you could put yours up here or out here, up here in the, into the head beam whatever you call it. <laughs> but you could use a pulley system, 25 bucks to get you like this pulley system, uh, which is probably what I should have done just to keep things cheap. But I just, I opted for this um, Harbor Freight winch, which was what, 100, I think 115 bucks, 110 bucks. And I like it. I like this solution. So I put the, because I can simply put this bar through these two hooks, that come with the with the winch. I'm just going to put this bar through these um, eye hooks and hang this winch. This gets a little tricky, but it's not too bad. that's that. Unfortunately, I have a plug right over here where this plugs into. Otherwise, you have to get you an extension cord. 
All right, so now all I got to do is I'm going to walk this out there because I have the wheels on the back. It's very easy. Unfortunately, I got these horrible pits in my driveway. And fortunately, the wheels come up just short of that. And I have these bike hooks on the end, which you may have noticed. And they're just going to go up over the rails on the side rail of the rack. And you really need the hooks because you're going to be pushing and pulling on this and you don't want the whole system moving back and forth. You certainly don't want to just rest it up there because it could slip off for obvious reasons. There's probably a better solution, but this is the one I'm going with for right now. So let's get this up there. And I go more towards the back because And I'll show you that here in a minute. Um, the Prince Sue rack has a little lip that goes up in the front. So if I go straight, you know, if I try to put it on the way where I want it, it'll hit that lip and I can't slide it on as easy. So I go towards the back and then I push it forward. Not that big a deal. But just so you know what's going on while I'm doing this. All right, so now at this point, we're going to take the winch and hook it to that end and lift it up so everything's parallel and then I'll just slide this over onto the roof rack. So now it's just a matter of sliding it down. And with this plastic, it makes it pretty easy. The only thing is, you gotta, since I don't have any rails side to side, I got to make sure I'm, you know, that I'm staying straight on here. But you can see I'm just, I'm not really having to hardly do anything. I don't really care to be underneath here, but it's pre pretty slick and straightforward. And then I'm gonna hit those bike racks, those bike hooks, I should say, and then I'm just gonna bump it up over each of those. And to help me out, I have put two little L brackets on the other side, so as I'm pushing this across, it, it already lines this thing up in the left-right direction. So it makes it super simple for me. Let me show you what those look like. So I have these here. So as I slide this across, it'll, those bars up underneath the rails that are underneath the tent will hit here. And that automatically, I know that's exactly where it needs to be to be centered left to right on this rack. I still have front to back to do, but that's of course not that hard. So that's why these are here. All right, so let's finish scooting this bad boy on and then I got to get these rails up over now unfortunately what happens is those L brackets I just showed you sometime catch on the lip all right so you can see here this L bracket is just barely catching and the reason why is because it's slightly tilted up which makes it catch that so i'm going to probably end up shaving just a little bit off that so i don't have to deal with this crap but right now you see how easy that was i just lift it up over and that's it now i can continue sliding it on so just keep pushing until it hits those brackets and that's it that's as far that way as I need to go. I just need to come forward. Now I have another issue when I press it forward the racks hit for some reason hit this rail which I got to lift it up over that. Again not that big a deal. Um, the other thing I need to do as you can see here I, there's no way I can get this out with this tolerance right here. This is way too close. So I have to lift this up and I got a little piece of 2 by 4 I put up under there to hold it so I can get this out. I also have to have this 
propped it up to actually put the brackets in because as you can see right now, we don't have any brackets to actually hold the tent to the rail system. Basically, I gotta lift this up and I have to get up on my tippy toes to do this. And there's that. And now, I just lift this off and roll this back into the garage. All right, so I'm gonna go all the way across with this. So I'm gonna put the screw facing the other end and these just simply slide in here. And then they go to the other side. Let me get the other one. make sure that these are wide enough so when I lower it, it doesn't hit anything. It can't hit that, and it can't hit that crossbar. I probably need to change these up and spread them out so I don't have such close tolerances here. And I'll do the same thing for uh, on the other end as well. All right, and then here I'm just using these rubber, they're really furniture pads, and they're just the, they're, you know, the rubber, which is nice. I may need to end up getting something more rigid, but I don't know if these are gonna get compressed permanently or not. I've used them several times and they've retained their shape. So I'm using this and this puts just enough gap so that the bottom of this brace doesn't dig into this rooftop of the Forerunner. And you may be asking, why do I have this so close to the edge? Well, when this tightens up, it'll be perfect. Plus the screw is real easy to get to from the end as opposed to if I scoot it down here, it's harder to see, which is not the end of the world, but I may end up doing that at some point. But for right now, I'm gonna keep on doing what I'm doing. All right, so now that we've got this side all set up, I'm gonna go ahead and take this little lifter out. That's what I'm calling it. <laughs> and we gotta do the same thing to the other side. So I'm not gonna make you watch me do the other side. So same deal, lower it down, and then I'll show how we're gonna tighten it. And then one little caveat in the front, which is exclusive to, I guess the Prinsu three-quarter rack, the wind guard, because of the way the brackets work on here, the way I gotta screw in from the end, the wind guard blocks. I can't get that rod in there to tighten down the bracket. All right, so, I don't know if you can see this or not, but right in there is where that rod has to go to get the screw. And you see this angle, there's no way I can get to it. And if, if this bracket was further back, there'd be no way I can get to it with this wind guard here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this screw out and loosen this screw. And this thing, of course, will pivot on that center screw and tilt down and give me plenty of room to do that. So let's do that real quick. All right, so now you can see now that this is down, I can easily get to this screw. that one all right so that is locked on so we're going to do that to all four of them and then i'm going to put this back and we're done So now we're just gonna reverse the order and take it off. First, I have to undo the, the clamps, bring this side up, put the ramp up there, bring the other side up, 
Oh, and take the clamps off, bring the other side up, take the clamps off, and then it just pretty much slides off. So here we go. This corner is hitting this bracket. So I gotta push it backwards so this will clear. All right, so here I just have to make sure that the tent is centered on the slide and because of all the plastic, I just don't want it to slide left or right. So it's, it's, it's just a little awkward because of the height, but it's, this stuff is really slick. It's, I know it looks like I'm straining here, but it's, it's, especially when I get this back piece over the two bike rack hooks, uh, it's a piece of cake. It just, slides that way if you wanted even less resistance you could lower the other end you know a few degrees 10 15 degrees and have it slide even easier but pretty straightforward And that's it thanks again for watching uh, I put some links in the comments below if you need any help with that and of course ask me any questions you have sorry for the long video <laughs> see you guys next time